Hey everybody, got another video here for you. This is going to be a how-to video. Um, I'm working on the Curved Tri Tail Tuner and it's time to turn this 24 fret, 12 and a half inch scale length, 12 inch fretboard radius, eBay Super Strat type neck into, uh, hold on a sec, into one of these, a no head neck for a uh, for one of these stick guitars with um with the uh, trapezoid neck profile. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to like explain each step and then just pause right quick, do it, and then show you the results. And you can basically follow along, or you know, refer back to it if you're going to give something like this a try yourself so be right back okay so first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need neck uh, this is uh, like I said this is a 24 fret 12 inch radius it's off of eBay um, super strat style um, they're going right now for about 50 bucks if you want to get a just regular strat style with 21 frets or 22 whatever it is um, those are still only about $35, so, so that's a bit more reasonable, but, but yeah, so you start by getting yourself a neck, and then if it's going to be a no head as opposed to a, if it's going to have headstock, then you don't have to worry about this part that I'm going to do up here, but you can just, you know, skip ahead in the video in order to see how to do the profile. It's going to get a trapezoid profile on the back of the neck. And it's going to get a triangular heel, so I'm going to and I'm going to demonstrate all that because I'm doing it. You might as well film it. So, okay. So the very first step is I've got it taped it off, got it taped off so that I can you know actually mark it out. Get a pen here, and I'm going to come in with my little uh, triangle here, and you know measure it off figure out where the center is and come back strike a center line and then that'll allow me to like figure out exactly where I want to cut this off I don't really want the hole to show but I do want if we look over here I do want this thing to have it's nice that the strings are up here above the slot for the truss rod. On the X5, they're down much lower, and it makes things more complicated. It doesn't look as nice either. This has a nice clean look to it. At least from the front, they're not quite lined up on the back, but this time I've got a drill press to work with, so hopefully everything will be nice and straight this time. But yeah, so this is the basic idea I'm shooting for, and the thing is, though, is that this headstock is a it's a bit narrower and it's definitely a bit narrower on this side I believe this might have originally been a 3x3 three three headstock or something but yeah so it's hard to say but anyway yeah so that's the plan let me go ahead and mark some stuff out and I'll be right back stand up guitar okay there you go Okay, got this all marked out. Uh, what I did is I measured the nut, found the center of it, marked out the center, marked out the center here, did a center line down the headstock, came in here and uh, drew a line from this corner to the edge of the circle and then carried it up to the center line and that told me more or less you know if I wanted to get all the shoulder here and then not get any of the hole that was more or less the angle I was looking at and I took a uh, compass and measured it out it turned out to be nine degrees and I replicated nine degrees on the other side and so I guess that's going to be the headstock crown shape and then I went ahead and measured out the nut slot spacing on this nut. It'll be close enough to whatever I end up putting on this thing. 
and that told me the spacing for the uh, string through holes and then I kind of looked kind of took halfway between this edge and this edge and made that the line where I put the string through holes got a nice perpendicular line or yeah perpendicular to the center line going on there after after I'd actually marked out the distances then I needed to figure out how far down to put them so everything seems to be marked out the next step is going to be to actually make this cut and make this cut there's a number of options I've got a I got a table saw and I can come in and just like you know put it on the table however it happens to rest and however the blade happens to come in just kind of zap and zap and that might make it slope towards the back a little bit That'd be one way to do it, or I could, you know, maybe take the nut off and flip it over and stack it up on some wood and stuff so that I could come in from this side and get a perpendicular cut. Um, then let's see, I could do the same kind of thing with a circular saw, maybe get all the plane of the, or the plate of the bottom of the circular saw on the headstock and get a nice perpendicular cut that way. Come in, you know, like zap and zap kind of a thing. Uh, jigsaw, once again I could get it all on the headstock probably and come in here with the jigsaw and cut those out. Or I could come in with a handsaw or um, a back saw as long as it had some kerf on the blade on the teeth would be uh, another good option because it would stay nice and straight being a back saw. But I think what I'm going to use is pretty much the smallest possible option and I'll be right back and here it is it's a coping saw it's got a curved blade it's a fine blade I've got good control if I come at the work this way as opposed to coming at the work like vertically then I can uh, get a nice straight cut here and I, I'm not super super worried about front to back lean because all this is going to get sanded and rounded down anyway and if it leans forward or backwards a little bit it's not a super big issue it's not like the headstock supposed to lean a, per, a specific direction it can be anything I want so 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 yeah that's the basic plan I'm gonna go ahead and and do that and I'll be back okay I got the cut started here and you can see how coming in at a very shallow angle I was able to get a nice straight line going and now I can concentrate on you know whether I want it to tilt this way or that way as I go ahead and complete the cut and also now that I've got a straight line I can start getting more vertical with the work instead of horizontal on my cutting angle and uh, it should also, it'll cut faster that way too, so, but in general, the straighter or the more horizontal you keep things, the straighter your results will be, so, but it takes longer. All right, I'll be back. Okay, the first cut is completed. It's all the way through on the front and all the way through on the back up to halfway which is all we need for this side of the cut now I'm going to do the same kind of thing on the other side here and I'll be right back okay so there it is um, two cuts not exactly even but the Shinto rasp will clean that up um, this is what the headstock or what I cut off, what it looks like. So, yeah, that's about all there is to it. I guess the next step is I'm going to drill this, I do believe. Drill it and then mark it out for the, uh, the trapezoid profile and the triangular neck. So, yeah. Um, now, drilling it, like I said, I've got a drill press. And I've never tried drilling one of these on the drill press in order to do this string through stuff on a neck before. So, 
Maybe I'll give that a try. Um, it should yield better results as far as like everything being straight in the back than trying to do it by hand. If I had a drill that had a spirit level built into it, like I used to, then, or if you attach a spirit level to a drill, a hand drill, then you could do this by hand, and if you're careful and keep the spirit level bolt straight and level, as you're going down, all your holes should be vertical, and your lineup in the front and the back should be okay. But, you know, if you've got a press that can keep things vertical for you, then definitely use a drill press, I'd say. So, I guess that's going to be the next step. Let me uh, go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to be using a 564 drill bit here, and uh, I need to punch these guys before I start. So I got the hammer and the punch here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to get the drill press. Dig it out from back there and uh, set it up and get this thing drilled. I'll be back. Okay, I got all those all punched up. And uh, yeah, next step is to get out the drill press. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the drill set up. And the plan is I'm just going to come in like this and zap them all right quick so um i'll be right back okay and there it is it's all done all nice and drilled and this drill it's just a little short one it uh it only cost um like 129 bucks online so yeah not a bad deal let me go ahead and shut it down, and I'll be right back. Okay, drill's unplugged, battery-powered laser lights turned off. The uh, drill bit's all put away, chuck keys put back where it won't get lost. Everything's all squared away. Turned out nice and straight, and turned out pretty straight on the back, too. Once again, that little bit right there will clean up with the rasp and should look pretty even so shouldn't be an issue and it's a little close to the edge but not too close so it should be okay and let's see angle wise it looks like they're the headstock goes back like this way but these are drilled more or less this way up and down so yeah perpendicular to the way it's laying on the table right now. They're, drill, they're drilled up and down. But as you can see, the headstock's going this way, the perpendicular the headstock would be, would be that angle. But the holes are drilled at that angle, this angle here. So, yeah, shouldn't be a big issue. There's, you know, more beef on the front than the back, but there's enough beef there, so. Um, let's see, I guess the next step is going to be marking out the neck for the trapezoid profile and the triangular heel. So, I'll be right back with that. The first step is going to be to get a center line going down the back of this thing, so I'll start with that. Okay, got a center line going here. I uh, measured out the heel width and then measured out halfway across and marked that point. I flipped it over and measured the width right here just above the nut or below the nut. And uh, when I took this piece and put it up against the side and then measured out half that distance in order to get this mark on this side. And then I just took the straight edge and put it down and kind of bent it and moved the pencil along it, making sure that I had the pencil, you know, leaning so that it actually drew 
right next to the edge of the straight edge. And, and that pretty much took care of it. That should be a good enough center line in order to get the rest of it marked out. So I'll be right back. Okay, first step to marking this thing out is going to be to lay out lines for the back part of the trapezoid profile. Uh, the basic plan is to leave like about 10 millimeters for the truss rod, almost like a skunk stripe area going all the way down the neck. Yeah, get my camera to follow my fingers here. It's going to be a basically a, we're going to mark off five millimeters to either side of the center line and get a nice 10 millimeter wide strip going all the way down the neck. And then once you get to the to the heel, then you'll come from here where the heel starts and meets your 10 millimeter wide strip, your back, and then just draw a line and draw a line, and that'll be your triangle. And then up here at this end, you're just going to take your 10, and it's just going to carry up to about here, and then you're just going to end up blending all this once you carved up. The neck part and just blend in headstock. So let me go ahead and mark that and I'll be right back. Okay, what I've done is I've come along here with this guy and marked out some marks five millimeters either side. That's that's in focus enough for you to get the idea. Yeah, so it's five millimeters either side of the center line and I got a series of marks. I got a set of marks here and a mark at the middle of the neck, marks down here by the heel, and then up on the heel itself. And all these marks are close enough together that I should be able to come in with this guy, which is a shorter ruler than this yardstick, or meter stick actually, and basically connect the dots and get my two sides for my quote unquote skunk stripe kind of thing, my spine, going on. So let me do that, I'll be right back. Time to connect some dots. Okay, all marked out. Got the connected all the dots coming down here. And then once I got to this end and got that side connected, then I went ahead and struck these two lines going out to the two corners of the heel from where they join right here. And that's all there is to it. The whole thing is marked out and it's time to start carving. So the basic idea behind the carve here is you're going to go in a straight line from this line to the seam to the edge here of the fretboard. So it's going to all this material that curves out from that straight line between here and, and that edge, all that material is going to get removed all the way up and down the guitar from here roughly to about here roughly and uh, what I'll do is I'll just do a little bit here with a Shinto by hand so that you can get an idea of what the profile looks like basically you just remove material here and on the opposite side over here you do not remove anything along the spine at all you need that in there for your truss rod so and I've more or less from experimentation have figured out that you can go with a 10 millimeter wide spine and you'll be safe. And nothing, it won't break, you won't cut through into the truss rod cavity, it'll be strong enough and everything. So yeah, and it gives you a really nice super fast neck. So, so yeah, um, and then over here at the heel, all of the you'll be doing the same idea where you remove material from this line to this line here at the bottom of the fretboard and yeah there'll be a fair amount to hog off here at the shoulders of the neck and um, and yeah so this is going to be more or less vertical at this point and then it'll be sloping down at this point and you'll end up with let me go get the other neck hold on You'll end up with a neck that looks pretty much like this. It'll have the triangle kind of shape on the neck. 
uh, this gets blended in and uh, down here on the heel you see how it goes from more or less vertical heel to blend it into the triangle and that's the basic idea so let me go get the rasp and I'll be right back okay I got the Shinto rasp here and uh, basically I'm just gonna come in like this and go from that line there down to the bottom edge of the fretboard and I want to keep it so that the file is basically going to connect the dots between this line and that line I need to be careful not to remove too much material I have to be careful not to get into the spine and I have to be careful not to get into the fretboard either even though technically you can you can use this technique and you can do the instead of using the bottom the fretboard as your line here you can actually use the top edge of the fretboard as your line and actually sculpt the V all the way into the edge of the fretboard as well so it can be done but you know that's a matter of personal preference I guess so yeah let me go ahead and do a little section so you get an idea of what the profile looks like and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna pause and hog out the rest of it with uh, an angle grinder and a 40 grit disc so I'll be back okay I just did a little section here by hand with the Shinto saw rasp just kinda came in and that kind of thing in order to give you an idea of the amount of material you're going to be removing as you can see that's pretty flat at this point I don't want to go any more with the rasp because I don't want to get into the fretboard or into the spine uh, once this whole thing gets sanded with like you know 60 grit and electric sander it'll all smooth out pretty good so shouldn't be an issue um, Plus, I can also come in with the very edge of the grinder and very delicately just kind of bring that down a little bit more. Um, they're, it's okay if they're not quite flat, if they bulge a little, or even if they're slightly fluted. It doesn't seem to be a big issue. The big, the big thing seems to be that you want to you want to get it down to a kind of a triangle thing you've got to leave the back alone so you don't cut through the truss rod you get it down to the triangle thing that gets the cross-sectional area of the neck profile itself down which makes the whole thing smaller and easier to reach around is what it boils down to and so yeah you can you can get your thumb around it easier in order to thumb the sixth string, you can wrap all your fingers around easier in order to stretch more or hit, you know, bar chords easier, stuff like that. So yeah, in general it does make the thing, it makes everything on this side just that much more reachable. It gives you an extra, maybe a quarter inch of reach on every finger, more or less, so an eighth inch at least I'd say. But yeah, so as you can see, you're not going to be taking, I wish these cameras would focus, but yeah, you're not going to be taking a whole lot of material out, and, uh, and so yeah, there's no issues with loss of strength or anything like that, so let me go ahead and fire up the grinder, and everybody wish me luck that I don't, you know, miss and cut into this thing or something, but... I'll try to go slow and be careful, so let me go ahead and, and hog out some of this material with the grinder and I'll be back. Okay, got this thing set up for working on. All I did is I just grabbed a clamp and I'm using that cut off piece of the headstock as my block to protect the neck and I just clamped it to the desk here and I'm just going to that's got me one end sticking out here so that I can stand and work on it with this thing and just you know come in and very quick and then uh, and then take clamp off and flip the thing around and clamp it up the other way so that the next so that the heels sticking out and then I can buzz down the heel and you know not everybody has an angle grinder or one of these discs so 
you know, starting at the bottom end, you could take, you know, a block of wood like this headstock here, it's nice and flat, and just wrap some 60 grit or 40 grit or whatever around it, and just block sand the whole thing by hand in order to get it flat and straight and everything. And you, it would take a while, it wouldn't take that long, because you're using coarse stuff. And uh, yeah, you'd get real good results that way, in fact, I might block sand it in order to, instead of using the uh, electric sander. But I'm not, I, like I said, if it's a little convex or concave, where are we at here? Come here, camera. Yeah, if it's a little convex or concave, it's not critical, so I'm not super hyper worried about getting a perfectly flat surface on either side. It just has to be good enough, good enough. Plus, um, in general with guitars, I find that I like the I like the look and feel of stuff that's been hand formed as opposed to machine formed because it's got a it's got a handcrafted look and feel to it basically. So um, I tend to prefer that. So I tend to. You know, I could have done this with like, you know, on a table saw with a, with a, with a bar or whatever, fence, sorry. Yeah, and you made it all like super perfect straight and stuff, but I'm going to end up sanding it anyway, and it's all going to be kind of rounded over, so, and give it a more organic kind of a feel to it, so. But anyway, yeah, um. And that's why you, you'll never see me using, you know, tons of jigs and stuff like this, like Texas Toast guitars. These guys are, I mean, they got a jig for just about everything over there. And they can build all kinds of crazy and cool guitars with them. But, you know, I'm not a factory. I'm just a hobbyist builder. So, let me go ahead and, uh, let's see, did I cover all, yeah. So you can come in with a sanding block. You can come in with a, a kitchen knife or a spoke shave and just shave it down and then sand it with the sanding block. You can come in with like a file or even better a Shinto rasp like I did for this one section and do it that way by hand. In fact, that's the way that I started out doing these necks and I've only done a few using the grinder but I've gotten to the point now where I've done enough of the necks that I can kick one out in like, you know, a couple hours maybe from start to finish. And uh, my, I've gotten confident enough that I'm not afraid to use the grinder at least for the, the chunky parts. So, so in the past, like the most recent one I made, I used the grinder for to hog out not quite to the edge or anything here on either side, but to, to take this down a bit and then, um, and especially at the shoulders. I might have even just done all this with a Shinto and then, but in the shoulders it takes a while even with the Shinto. So, uh, so then I usually break bad with this thing. But yeah, so buzz it down a little bit with that, finish up with the Shinto and then the electric quarter sheet sander is my general approach so let me start by doing some grinding and uh, angle grinder sanding and I'll be back okay and there's one side done it's just kind of sculpted out there and if I like took off less material you can see I actually cross line ever so slightly in a couple spots. If I took off, if I was less aggressive with the grinder and took off a little less material just up near the lines instead of right to them, and then, you know, finished off with the rasp or something, I could get something even more perfect. But like I said, this is, I like the organic kind of handmade feel, so this is going to be okay. Let me go ahead and do the other side, and I'll be back. Okay, so there's the second side. Didn't get into the spine any this time, but I did actually just a little bit talk to the fretboard. But like I said, you can actually make the carve so that it stops at the front edge of this fretboard. So this isn't really an issue. Once I get sanded down, you know, that's all going to look fine. 
So this is, except for a little, and the blending really can be done with the sander more or less. So that's going to do it for the heavy duty on the top end. Now all I got to do is the heel. Let me uh, switch this thing around. I'll be right back. Okay, it's turned around, and now basically I want to come in and finish out this carve here on this side, and finish out this carve here on this side, and I'll be right back. Okay, there's one side, all nice and curved, and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and do the other side. And there it is, all done, both sides. So, uh, yep, got a triangular heel now. And I'm all done with that thing. It's actually feeling real nice already, even though it's only been sanded to like 40 grit. So the next step is to get the electric sander and just smooth it all out right quick. So, be right back. Okay, got the sander here and uh, 60 grit, it's not a new sheet, but it's far from worn out. And uh, I'm just gonna hit this thing up right quick all over once, and then just see how it looks as far as like the shape and if there's any high spots or, or unevenness. See if the sander can fix that up or whether I need to get on it with the rasp. And yeah, so I'll be right back. Okay, this side's sanded down. This thing's pretty darn smooth. It doesn't look like it's gonna need a whole lot of extra work. I uh, just, I took very little off the back of the heel. I wanna try to keep it flat. Flattened out the two sides, then I kinda of just rounded over the center part. Um, just smoothed this stuff out here. Uh, smoothed it out a little bit here. Rounded all these edges here on the heel. And these edges here and the edges around the fretboard and all these edges around the fretboard here and I actually did a little bit on the side of the fretboard and even tilted it in slightly just to barely get the edge of the fret ends but I'll you know at a later point I'll come in and I'll, I'll roll that stuff and, and around the fret ends so so now I flip it around and sand the other end, and that's it. Be right back. Okay, and that takes care of this end, all sanded down. Didn't really take long at all. Sanded down, and smoothed out, and blended and stuff. That's the 60 grows through this stuff pretty quick, so. Yeah, now all I need to do is flip it over and sand what little bit of is left of the headstock. So let me do that. Okay, got it flipped over, clamped back in. And uh, as you can see, there's really not much to do here. I haven't really checked into like what kind of nut this guitar is going to get or anything. So I'm... Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're still here. Drop the phone. Yeah, I don't know what kind of nut this thing's going to get, so I'm not going to worry about taking that off. And Well, maybe I'll knock it off first before I sand it, because I doubt it's going to have this nut on it. So, yeah, I've, I've got lock nuts around and stuff. I'll take the nut off. Oh, no, I'm not going to take the nut off. I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I might want to end up using it. So, yeah, I'm just going to sand off this blue stuff, basically. And down in the hole, um, I got a, this thing's getting purple, so maybe I'll do that in a flat black down in there, just brush some in, so. Let me go ahead and zap this with the sander and round off the front edges a bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is, it's all done. Got the front sanded up, sanded around the edges and stuff. Um... It's all finished sanded basically. I got as much as I could out of the end, but hey, it's in grain, so it's still going to keep some sealer and it'll probably not take stain. Um, I even did kind of the sides of the fretboards a little bit and the ends of the frets a little bit. It's feeling pretty nice. Still needs a little rolling, but and obviously, you know, clean up and polish, but yeah. 
So that's the basic process there, and that's what you end up with. It's something kind of like this, and this thing is ready for stain. It's going to get like a dark purple, and I think we're going to leave the fretboard just the way it is because it's real pretty looking. Once it gets oiled up, it should look real nice. So, so yeah, and this is another one of these copper dots. These things used to be just a little under, I think they were like $45 originally. And they were 24 fret, 12, and a half, 12 inch radius, 25 and a half inch scale like And they were advertised as having orange dots, but they're really more copper colored. And I got, I probably ended up buying nine of these things over the course of a couple of years, but I haven't seen any more online anymore. And like I said, these necks are now about 50 bucks a pop, so. But yeah, um, and they had like, you know, nice frets and had everything on there, nice necks. They always had nice rosewood on them, so. But anyway, um, I think that's going to do it for this how-to video. This thing is, actually it's not bad, 35 minutes, so. Yeah, okay. Um, until the next one, everybody, have a good one.